Hey Randy, today we're going to talk about how to take good astrophotography. First thing you want to do is grab your Sony camera because this is, at the end of the day, a Sony camera guide. We're going to mount it to our tripod here because of course you have to have a good tripod mount in order to take long exposure pictures. All right, now that it is mounted into the tripod stand, let's go ahead and uh, aim this little puppy. Um, I do have the kit lens 18 to 135 uh, f 3.5 to 5.6 kit lens on here. Um, I wanted to show you it with because I believe you have this lens, Randy. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and point it at the sky here. Unfortunately, it's kind of a cloudy night, so uh, we're not going to get quite as great shots as we have seen previously. Uh, first thing we're going to want to do is uh, rotate this middle dial here to where we get our uh, our ex uh, exposure settings. Um, we want to move this all the way up to between, I don't know, 15 or 30. So these are seconds here. So this is going to be a many second long exposure. Um, and we're just rotating this little dial here to, uh, to change that. So let's start with 15 and, uh, and we'll start there. Um, then we're going to rotate this little dial here and this will change our aperture. Now, hopefully your camera is smart enough to realize that the aperture needs to be all the way open. Some manual, manual lenses, like I have um, my f1.4 lens, uh, you actually rotate the aperture on the lens directly. But with these automatic le kit lenses, you do rotate it with this little dial up here. Um, so we want to make sure this is as big as possible. The smaller the number, the larger the aperture. So f4 is as big as we can go at four, uh, 24 millimeters. If we roll this back to 18 millimeters, uh, we can go down to f3.5. Um, so actually like the framing a little bit better at 24. So we're gonna go ahead and deal with that. The last thing that we wanna change here, the three pieces to the exposure puzzle is the ISO. And uh, we wanna leave the ISO here at auto because the Sony is actually really good at figuring out where the ISO needs to be. Um, but keep in mind the larger ISO number, the more noise you're gonna get, but at the same time, the more light you're gonna be able to capture. So you should be able to boost the ISO up to quite a good number here um which is just gonna this is just gonna practically be noise uh, just noise at a hundred thousand um so we're gonna leave this at auto it'll probably fluctuate between i don't know a couple hundred and a couple thousand um so we're just gonna go ahead and leave this at auto and snap a 15 second exposure to get a baseline okay we just heard the uh, pop and there it goes it processed so let's go ahead and see what it looks like by pushing the little play button down there. And here is our beautifully uh, exposed and shot picture here. So we can see this tree is nicely highlighted and the reason why the sky is looking yellowy orange instead of uh, beautiful stars is because it's cloudy tonight, but I figured uh, we'd want to show you this sooner than later. Um, you can see down here, this was a car traveling across a highway here, and see that light streaked over the 15 second exposure, that's how those light streaks happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, you want a clear sky, as long of a shutter speed you can get that doesn't overexpose it. If we went all the way up to 30, I believe this would be pretty overexposed, so we're going to leave it at 15 here, but for straight star pictures, you should be able to do 30. Um, the longer the shutter, the better. The larger the aperture, the better. Aperture's uh, adjusted on this little dial here. And then ISO setting should be left at auto. Uh, but if you really wanna get fancy, uh, higher ISO means more noise and more light. So hopefully that helps, Randy. Uh, let me know if you need anything else.